the ethnic genesis of the Mongol nation mostly comes down to three ancestral components. Slab Grave, Baikal Bronze Age, and Indo-European. Now, in this video, I will show you the DNA results, so predicted appearance, illnesses, and of course, GD match results of three medieval Mongol samples. Uh, so, I'm telling you about this Sintashta and Baikal Bronze Age and Ancient North Eurasian and Slab Grave because you need to understand this to understand the rare GD match results. Because, for example, some of these samples score a lot of West Mediterranean or West Asian or Baltic or North Atlantic on Eurogene's K13. This is because of Indo-European, West Eurasian, Caucasoid ancestry. And some of them score a lot of Siberian or a lot of East Asian. This is because of Slab Grave and Baikal Bronze Age ancestry. Uh, let's move on to the first sample, who is a female. She lived around uh, the middle of the 14th century, which, by the way, all of these samples are from the same time period. And here is her predicted phenotype with Nashakot. According to Nashakot, she had brown eyes at 64%, which is uh, very surprising for an East Asian to have brown eyes, because uh, East Asians on my calculator tend to score dark brown eyes at frequencies of 99.9 something percent, same as uh, Africans, but she's scoring brown eyes at 64%, and I will explain to you why she's scoring brown eyes. She's scoring snub-shaped nose and black hair, which is why I depicted her this way, and you might be looking at the picture and you might be wondering, why did I depict her to look so white? Why did I not give her uh, any East Asian facial features? And the reason I didn't give her any East Asian facial features is because she did not have derived EDAR. And here I show you the reason why I depicted her with brown eyes and why Nashakot predicted her to have brown eyes instead of dark brown, which is typical for East Asians. She had this super rare genotype in the Tyr gene, and this gene is very... well, it's not very, but it's somewhat important in my Nashakot calculation to determine eye color. Uh, so this is why she had brown eyes instead of dark brown. According to her genotype in Compt, she was a warrior with the IO, which means uh, quicker reuptake of dopamine, which means less dopamine in the system, which means more stress resilience. This is a very typical genotype for non-Europeans. Her genotype in DRD2 actually surprised me quite a lot. She was a no-go learner with a decreased risk of schizophrenia and uh, less dopamine D2 receptors. Uh, now, what's interesting is that this is a very typical genotype for Europeans, but it's very, very rare outside of Europe, and she had this genotype. She also did not have the sociopath gene. Now, this slide is basically me showing you that she did not have derived EDAR, not a single derived allele in EDAR. Uh, very typical for West Eurasians and Africans, very atypical for East Asians. She did not have the European lactose persistence allele and was most likely lactose intolerant as an adult. And she actually had the mutation, the European mutation, that protects people against myopia. Myopia is basically illness where you have uh, nearsightedness or farsightedness. You can't see very uh, in the distance or you can't see close up. And you need glasses for that. But Europeans have this mutation that protects against this illness. And this individual from Mongolia, she had this mutation. When it comes to polygenic traits, she had a very, very high risk score for Parkinson's. A pretty low risk score for Crohn's disease. A, a slightly above average risk score for bipolar disorder and a slightly below average risk score for schizophrenia. This is what she scores with Eurogene's K13. Now, of course, the dominant components here are Siberian and East Asian, and Siberian comes from those Baikal hunter gatherers. East Asians comes from more of the Amur hunter gatherers. Both of these are the majority components that make up Mongol DNA. However, she also has West Eurasian admixtures such as West Asian, Baltic, and North Atlantic. According to the oracle, she's closest to Mongols and Buryats and can be modeled as a mixture of Mongols with basically some uh, Siberian groups. I think the reason she's scoring Mongol plus Siberian is because she has a little bit more Siberian in her result than the average Mongol person. Uh, this is her score with Eurogene's K36. Uh, now, of course, the largest components here are uh, Siberian, East Central Asian, and East Asian, but she's scoring a little bit of North Caucasian too, which is uh, in the green here on the left of the circle, quite a big chunk. She's also scoring a little bit of like Volga Ural and South Chinese and Finno Scandian. Uh, this is what she scores with Gidrosia K3, quite a large chunk of West Eurasian ancestry. It's a fifth, and this is this this is the part of her ancestry that's mostly re responsible for her phenotype because, as you've seen earlier, her phenotype is very much the opposite of East Asian. Here is her result with Ancient Eurasia K6, also a Gidrosia calculator. You can pause and uh, ponder about this result, but I'm going to go uh, through it quickly. With the Oracle, she's basically getting modeled as a mixture of like Han, which is in China, Chinese, plus uh, some Northern European. 
And according to the official G25 coordinates that I found for this sample on Explorer DNA, she is the closest to Kalmyx. Now let's move on to the second sample. The second sample is also a medieval Mongol, this time from the more eastern part of Mongolia. And also from the same time period, middle of 14th century after Christ. And his Y DNA was C2, which is typical for modern Mongols. And it's also found in like Kazakhstan and other uh, places that were influenced by the Mongols. You see, this individual did not have any of the like big mutations for light pigmentation. So unlike the previous sample, he's predicted to have dark brown eyes at 94%, uh, snub nose at also 94%, and black hair at 97%. So you can pretty much uh, accurately say that this individual had very dark pigmentation and snub nose. Uh, he had two derived alleles in EDAR, also very different from the previous sample, and which is why I depicted him with mongoloid appearance. Here you can see on code gen that he had actually two derived alleles in EDAR, which means uh, basically 100% mongoloid phenotype. His genotype in DRD2 was pretty typical for East Asians, so there is nothing too interesting. However, there is something interesting about his genotype in the Comte gene, because in the Comte gene, he had the warrior genotype with the IE, uh, which means advantage in memory and attention tasks because the dopamine reuptake is slower and more dopamine builds up in the system. But this is a genotype that's not typical for East Asians and very typical for Europeans. He also had the European lactose persistence mutation and was most likely able to digest milk. Moving on to polygenic traits, he had a pretty high risk score for Crohn's disease, a very incredibly high risk score for Parkinson's disease, he had a pretty average risk score for type 2 diabetes, he also had a pretty average, maybe slightly below average risk score for schizophrenia, and a very very low risk score for bipolar disorder. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13, also pretty similar, I guess, but there is more diverse. Um, it's more diverse than the previous sample in terms of the West Eurasian ancestry, so this sample is scoring a little bit of North Atlantic and West Mediterranean as well as Baltic and West Asian. With the Oracle, he is also closest to Mongols and Buryats, which are in Siberia, and he can be modeled as a mixture of Mongol with something from Japan, I guess. Hezhen, I think, is in China. Here's his result with Eurogenes K36. Once again, I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly, but you can pause and ponder about it if you like. Uh, he's scoring a little bit less North Caucasian than the previous sample. He's also scoring South Central Asian a little bit, which I think is uh, like 1.5% here. And mostly East Central Asian, East Asian, and Siberian, just as the previous sample. Here's his result with Gedrosia K3. As you can see, he had quite a lot of West Eurasian admixture and his result with Ancient Eurasia K6. Interesting that, uh, unlike the previous sample, he does not score any ancestral South Eurasian. According to the Oracle for Ancient Eurasia K6, he's closest to like Kalmyx followed by Eskimos. And what's funny, he can actually be modeled as a mixture of Nganasan, which are people in the very, very north of like Arctic Siberia, plus Jewish or like Levant. Um, and the official G25 for this sample is also closest to Kalmyx. Now we are moving on to the third sample, who is also a medieval Mongol, this time from the north of Mongolia, bordering on Irkutsk Oblast in Russia, and she is a female. Uh, this is her predicted phenotype with Nashakot. She is predicted to have dark brown eyes, snub nose, and black hair. However, if you look at the prediction for snub nose, for nose shape, she's got almost the same score for snub nose as for Greek nose. So uh, she has the, the least snub nose out of these uh, three samples. And in fact, her nose shape was probably comparable to mine because I also score like 55% snub, 44-45% uh, Greek. And I depicted her looking sort of Eurasian, not fully white, not fully East Asian, because she had one derived allele in EDAR. She had uh, this interesting genotype, which I don't really know much about, I just thought it was fascinating. Uh, she had a pretty typical genotype in DRD2 for East Asians. And she had the EDAR, which I, I'm showing to you here. She did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was likely lactose intolerant as an adult. Uh, when it comes to polygenic diseases, she had a slightly above average score for Crohn's disease. She also had a slightly above average risk score for Parkinson's. Um, she had a pretty much an average risk score for bipolar and a very, very below average, in fact, very low risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, this is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. Now, one thing that's interesting to me that I noticed here is that her West Eurasian ancestry is mostly very, very northern. Like, look at her North Atlantic and Baltic, and she doesn't have any West Med, and she only has 2% West Asian. So she has a little bit of West Eurasian ancestry, but her West Eurasian ancestry is mostly like Northern European instead of Mediterranean or Southern or Caucasus. 
With the Oracle 4K if you're seeing, she's closest to Mongols and Altaians and can be modeled as a mixture of basically uh, Altaian plus I think that's in, Ch in China. Hezhen is China, right? It's Chinese or Tuvinian plus Chinese or Tuvinian plus Vietnamese. Basically a mixture of Siberian people and um, East Asians. Here's what she scores with Eurogene's K36. Now one thing you can notice instantly is that she's not scoring any North Caucasian unlike the other samples. She is scoring a little bit of South Central Asian which is like that gray part uh, on the right of the circle which is maybe 3% but it's, it's really little. It's a very small part of her DNA. Uh, she's also scoring a little bit of Amir Indian, American Indian. Um, you can ponder, you can pause and ponder about these results. This is her result with Gidrosia K3. Uh, just as the previous guy, she's scoring around 14 or 15% West Eurasian ancestry. And this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, also a Gidrosian calculator, where she's scoring around 80% East Asian ancestry. And she actually got a lot of West, uh, West European hunter-gatherer at 5%. With the oracle for this calculator, she's also closest to Kalmyks, like the previous guy, and even like Eskimos. And she can be modeled basically as a mixture of Kalmyk plus Eskimo, or a mixture of Han, which is Chinese, plus a little bit of early Middle Bronze Age step. And the official G25 for the sample is also closest to Kalmyks. And this is what all three samples score with Davidsky's global calculator on G25. Uh, you can see the largest categories here are Han and Nganasan, Han representing the Chinese or basically East Asian admixture and Nganasan representing the Siberian uh, admixture that they had. They have varying levels of Yamnaya Ganjdare, which is uh, Ganjdare is Neolithic farmer from Iran. And, but basically if I had to sum up the general trend here, it's um, around 5 out of 6 East Asian and 1 out of 6 West Eurasian admixture. Thanks for having watched until the end. You can actually download all of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.